And I understand it, uh, Gitmo has created controversies. It needs to be closed. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 10 of the worst prisons in history. There are, I don't know, maybe 500 people in this little tiny room. For this list, we're looking at inhumane, unruly, and unjust prisons throughout history and the world. What is the most chilling example of a terrible prison you know of? Be sure to share in the comments below. San Quentin Prison, United States. As California's oldest prison, San Quentin is notorious for its infamous inmates and insane levels of violence. Out in the general population of the prison, inmates get yard time for just a couple of hours twice a week. Other than showers and meal times, these are their only moments outside their cells, a chance to socialize and make allies. Before the state of California did away with the death penalty, San Quentin had the largest death row facility in the United States with up to 700 inmates at a time. Since it opened in 1852, the prison has housed many well-known criminals, such as Scott Peterson and Charles Manson. How do you feel about spending the rest of your life in prison? Well, we're all our own prisons. We each are our own wardens, and we do our own time. It has a reputation for being corrupt, overcrowded, and dangerous, with deadly riots, racially motivated violence, and cases of guards torturing prisoners. Throughout the prison, tempers flare and tensions are on the rise. Diyarbakir Prison, Turkey. The same year it was built, Diyarbakir Prison became a hub for human rights violations. After the 1980 Turkish coup d'etat, the newly built facility was changed to a martial law military prison. In its new role, Diyarbakir Prison became rife with abuse. Dozens of prisoners perished during this period of barbarity, as it's known. Inmates were routinely deprived of sleep and food and water, and subjected to torture, beatings, sexual humiliation and assault, mock executions, and the extraction of healthy nails and teeth. In September 1996, after a scuffle or riot, depending on who you believe, dozens of police, guards, and soldiers stormed the prison and beat 10 men to death, wounding 46. Chateau d'If, France. Considering it's the inspiration behind the classic novel The Count of Monte Cristo, it's no surprise that this prison is among the worst of all time. Located nearly a mile off the coast of France, Chateau d'If was considered inescapable. The fast currents around the tiny island were even better at keeping inmates trapped than the walls of the fortress. Corruption rotted the prison from the inside, with wealthy prisoners able to buy their way into luxurious private rooms. Meanwhile, the poorest inmates were crammed into crowded windowless cells in the dungeons of the fortress. The prison closed in the late 19th century and now serves as a tourist attraction. Devil's Island. French Guiana. Another French prison on an island, the penal colony of Cayenne was even more brutal. In the early 1800s, France experienced an explosion in its urban population. The French saw the territory's remote location and brutal climate as fitting punishment for the dregs of their society. To deal with recidivism, it was decided that prisoners should be removed from society. From 1852 until 1952, 80,000 prisoners were shipped off to Devil's Island off the coast of French Guiana in South America. The voyage from France to Guiana was a hell of its own. Men were kept in cages in the holds of prison ships. Due to the tropical climate, disease ran rampant throughout the penal colony, and violence among the prisoners and guards was common. Convicts were given a tour of the tools of punishment, employed for those who disobeyed prison rules or managed to commit crimes while prisoners. Very few of the inmates returned to France. In fact, the mortality rate was as high as 75%. Elmina Castle, present-day Ghana. This castle in present-day Elmina, Ghana became a major trading post in the Atlantic slave trade that enslaved some 12 million Africans in the 16th to 19th centuries. It was originally constructed as a trade settlement by the Portuguese in 1482 and later seized by the Dutch. Both were guilty of slavery, turning the castle into a house of horrors. Enslaved men, women, and children were subjected to horrific, cramped conditions in the prison before being crammed into ships and forced to cross the ocean. The castle only stopped serving this purpose in 1814, when the Dutch finally abolished the slave trade. La Sabaneta Prison, Venezuela. 
Also known as Maracaibo National Prison, this institution was among the worst in a system of terrible prisons throughout the country of Venezuela. Prisons need to be places for re-education, and we affirm that we will continue with plans for prisons and penitentiaries to not be places for the mafia, crime, violence and drugs. Known for its extremely high levels of violence among inmates, the prison was in operation from 1958 to 2013. La Sabaneta prison was massively overcrowded, filled with more than five times the number of inmates it was meant to house, with an estimated 192 of its occupants being the children of prisoners. Rights groups have long complained about the state of jails in Venezuela. Overcrowding is a major concern, with most facilities holding up to three times more than the number of prisoners they were built for. The inmates lacked access to proper food, water, and medical care. With its high levels of corruption, the prison was controlled by gangs of inmates and experienced several deadly riots throughout its history. The institution finally closed after 16 inmates perished during a riot in 2013. In some of the country's 34 mostly run-down prisons, heavily armed inmates have taken over. When will these massacres cease to exist? We want the government's presence in Sabaneta National Prison. More and more dead and Minister Varela doesn't visit here. Tool slang, Cambodia. Considering it translates to hill of the poisonous trees, it's no surprise that this product of the brutal Khmer Rouge regime is among the worst prisons of all time. Here they interrogated anyone who they considered to be an enemy of the state, which seemed to be just about everyone. Occupying a former school, Tool Slang in Cambodia was established in early 1976 to imprison victims of the Khmer Rouge. The prison's buildings were surrounded by electrified barbed wire and housed torture chambers and cramped cells. This wasn't just a place where people died, it was a place where they died horribly. Approximately 20,000 people were imprisoned within the walls of Tool Slang. Prisoners were subjected to daily strip searches, meager rations, violent interrogations, and unsanitary conditions. More than 18,000 people perished due to diseases, executions, and violence. This picture was taken when I was arrested. I was 19. This is my friend from the same village as me. This is another friend. This one was the group leader. They're all dead. Gitarama Prison, Rwanda. One of, if not the most overcrowded prisons on the planet, Gitarama Prison in Rwanda has been described as hell on earth. This is the prison at Gitarama, an hour's drive west of the capital, Kigali. Despite being built to accommodate 400 inmates, the prison has housed up to 7,000 prisoners within its cramped walls. Because of the massive overcrowding, prisoners are forced to stand for hours on end, oftentimes barefoot, which causes foot injuries and even rot. The deplorable and unhygienic conditions lead to several deaths a day. Even more disturbing, some reports claim that inmates engage in deadly fights and consume the deceased in order to survive. Wherever we went in the prison, there was rank filth, fetid air, and listless men packed cheek by jowl. Caranjiru Penitentiary, Brazil. Officially named Sao Paulo House of Detention, this now demolished Brazilian prison was once the largest in South America, with more than 8,000 inmates. In 1992, a massive riot broke out among the prisoners. After hours of unrest, military police breached the prison and massacred 111 inmates and injured dozens more. The military police claimed that inmates were attacking them with handheld weapons and HIV-infected bodily fluids, but evidence suggested that the prisoners were attempting to protect themselves. The prison was demolished in 2002, but it took another 11 years for the military police officers involved in the massacre to face justice. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Established by the United States as part of George W. Bush's War on Terror in 2002, this military prison in Cuba has received international criticism due to its human rights violations. What's taking place down there is responsible, it's humane, it's legal, it's proper, it's consistent with the Geneva Conventions, and after a period, 
that will sink in. Detainees are held indefinitely without trial. Few are ever convicted. Former Bush administration official Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson stated in 2009 that most were innocent. Inspectors and released detainees have given accounts of sleep deprivation, humiliation, beatings, sexual assault, and torture, including but not limited to waterboarding. I was very shocked when I first went there that this was something where the American flag flew. Dozens of inmates have attempted to take their own lives, some successfully. Four years after it opened, the United Nations demanded the closure of the prison. But it remains open and operational. It's not a prison. It's not normal. It's not where a human being should be kept in any circumstance, regardless of if he's a criminal or not.